Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with this scrap fabric challenge that I forced upon myself. <laughs> I'm a little bit stumped with this one. I haven't really had time to work on it that much and I really can't think of what it can be turned into until I see what I have for fabric. If you're not familiar with this series, playlist link is down below. I, I did finish using up all my muslin twigs. Is that what I called them? Sticks. The little baby ones are twigs. My muslin sticks and I put, you know, the two pieces of batik together. I got 30 of those, I think. I'm not sure. And I guess what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start putting some muslin together with the um, batik sticks and see how many I can get of those. I still have all this left of batik and this is what I have to work with for the muslin and I have all these sticks. So let me just go to my machine. I'm not going to take you to the machine. Let me go to my machine and see what I can get done and then I'll be right back. I ended up making 30 of these. I could make a few more but since I have 30 of these I thought I'd stop at 30 of these and just think again. And I like these more than I thought I would. I picked a kind of a reddish thread which really doesn't show on anything other than the yellow, but I like it because the yellow has some little dots and I don't know. I don't know if you could see anything there. So this is what I have left. I have this left for muslin. I still have all this batik and then I still have all these sticks. I don't know why I have so much more batik. I, oh yeah, because I used more batik than muslin in that quilt. I gotta think. I have tried so many things. It's hard because I'm trying to think of the final project, but I can't because I have no clue really how much fabric I will end up with. But one thing I have decided, I'm going to go do that now. Some of these muslin pieces are quite wide and I'm going to use up these sticks by just top stitching some on these other pieces just randomly. And these pieces, you know, are all different widths also. So it's kind of hard to figure out how to piece things. But let me go use up all of these sticks on the muslin. I really like the muslin with the batik sticks. And I thought it would be the opposite. I like this very much, especially with the double. But I still don't know what I want to do. I still have some sticks and I still have some that don't have um, two because they're kind of narrow and I thought maybe I could just make a strip set, put these guys together and use uh, the remaining, you know, to attach that. It would just be a lot of batik and not as much muslin and if I run out of sticks, well I do have some very narrow salvages that I could just use as is, or I could fold them if I wanted to create my own stick. So I just don't know. I wish I knew what I wanted to make. I, I don't remember struggling with the last scrap challenge, which was my first. I don't know if I'll ever like anything more than that. It was the homespun and muslin little pet bed, and it did actually go to someone with a dog. I'm so excited. And it had a pillow. I'll link to that one down below. I just absolutely loved that project. This one, I'm clueless. Let me think a little bit more. Yeah, I really think I'm going to put together some of these to make a strip set. Not a whole gigantic long one, but maybe start with one and then rethink this. So if I join two that has a strip pretty close to here, like if I overlap, I don't want another thing there. I think that might be a little too close. And in that case, and since I have red thread, I would put them this way and sew and then open. So that's how I will do that. But if I put two together and there is room, like where's something wide, okay? See, this is pretty wide on this side and this is pretty wide. So in this case, I can overlap and do that. Let me get started with that. 
I have various strip sets that, um, you know, I didn't want to make them too long. I really like them. I still have no clue what I want to do with that and this. And I still have all this. And the thing is, I want to use all the scraps and I don't want to just always make a pillow. So I'm going to just figure this out. It is the next day and I think I'm wearing the same shirt. <laughs> I pretty much have all the scraps put into fabric. This, not really. It's just a bunch of pieces. I still don't know what I'm doing with those. And then I have these strips that, I don't know, did I show you those last night? I think I did. And then all the leftover batik pieces, I just put those into strip sets too, just to have some fabric. And I just left various sizes. Um, I love this so much. I think this is my favorite so far. Because of all the seams in the back, it's really puffy. I don't know. I hate to even press it. All of these things will look so much better once they're, you know, pressed and trimmed or put into the project. Now, here's what I'm thinking. I think I'm going to do two projects. I really think I am. I might make a small tote with this stuff. I have more of this than this. So I was thinking of this for the lining. Actually, it will probably pretty much be reversible. So I have less of this. So I think I'm going to sew and make one gigantic long strip. See how much I have. And then I could cut it into four pieces to make um, lining front and back. I don't know if that made any sense. It doesn't even really make sense to me. But let me just do that senseless thing. Now I'm wearing a different shirt and <laughs> it's the same day. I had to run out and it's really bitter, cold, windy. It's not that it's so much really cold, but the wind makes it feel cold. And I need my winter shirt, three quarter length sleeves, <laughs> as opposed to a t-shirt. I made this super long and absolutely gorgeous strip. Wait till you guys see what I have. I have other batik strips. These happen to be five inch ones, I think, five and a quarter. I mean, I have a shitload of them. And then I also have, look at this, look at this. Look, look, look. This is all batik strips, uh, salvages, and a lot of sticks. And I have a lot of sticks there. I just, I, I want to put some of that on eBay, but I'm not done looking at it yet. Okay. So I want, um, lining and I'm going to have to double this. Well, what I'm saying is like if I cut it into four pieces, I could have one piece here, one piece here for one side and then one piece and one piece sewn together for the other side. But all I really have to do is cut it in half, sew that together. And then if I were to fold, it would give me lining about that wide. I'll just show you what I mean. Let me just cut this in half. And I'm just going to uh, do it on the fold. All right. Now I'm going to, uh, I got to get my cutting mat. I'm going to trim these and sew these two strips together. And I didn't plan the placement of like these yellow pieces. And they came out pretty evenly spaced. There's a little kind of a blank space here. But I just love it. Uh, when I sewed these, you know, I just sent all of them together, you know, just two. And then I took all those strips of two and put those together to make strips of four. And I just kept doing that, sending things through. It's very quick and easy. I absolutely love it. All right, now here's my thinking. See, if I were to fold this like this, I still have to trim these two edges. That would give me the lining of the bag. So the bag would be about this size. So I'm going to uh, do it this way though. And I'm only going to sew this edge. I need to leave the top and bottom open for the tote I'm making and I will show you. I've made it before, I have some old videos, but I'm going to do it again. And um, so I'm just going to trim here and here and I'm going to sew here. This is what I have. This is inside out. I'm leaving it inside out, but it's just a tube. You know, if you 
start a tote like this and you just want to cut squares, you would just, for the lining, you would just sew your uh, two squares together on the sides. You leave the top and bottom open. Putting this aside, well, I can't put it too far away because now I have to make the outside of the tote this same size. And I'm assuming I have more of this, so I'm sure I can do this. Okay, so this little piece is just about perfect. This one will have to be trimmed. And then uh, this one would have to be trimmed. That would need something added to it. Yeah, I have more than enough. And, then, and what's left can be the tote strap. All right, let me cut my pieces and I'll show you. I got way too hot, so I'm back in yesterday's shirt. Well, what I did is I just uh, tried to make pieces. I was generous just because I'd rather have it too big than not big enough. And I cut some pieces I had to add because a couple of these weren't long enough. So I just added and then trimmed off. And so now I have a front and a back of the outside. I am going to, oh, and then of course, I just sewed the strips together. You basically, if you wanna make a tote like this, you just need four squares the same size. I just ended up making a tube. Four squares the same size, and then you can decide if you want a long strap or just a short handle. And if you ever want to jump ahead and see how my creation comes out, you can uh, look down below because this will be on eBay, and there'll be a link to it on eBay, so you can always go and just look at it and then come back. I'm going to just sew the both sides and the bottom this time, so I'm just going this way, this way, uh, this way. Um, you guys, this is so cute. I love the size of it. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I just turned it and that's it. Now we need to work on the handles. Obviously, I can cut this in half to make something longer. And again, mm, I don't know if I just want a strap or two little handles. Let me think. I think I'm going to go with short. Two handles. So I'm going to cut this baby in half. And uh, I'm not even going to bother trimming it. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So about two and a half in should be half. <laughs> so like right there. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Oh God, I hope I'm doing the right thing. I will link down below to one of my tote bag videos from long ago. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I did watch a couple of things just because I wanted to remember how I did something. And uh, it will show you how to make a bag step by step and with an uh, actual like long strap. All right, so to make my handles, I'm going to fold in and in. And then I fold this over and I sew. I think these came out so cute. It was uh, hard to sew straight because I was, you know, sewing over those sticks that are like, you know, there's four thicknesses of sticks after I folded. But it's so cute. And I pressed them. Oh yeah, so when I stitched, I had my red thread in and I liked that because it, uh, you know, it shows. And then even though I didn't have to stitch on the other side, I always do. I top stitch so that the two sides match. Oh boy, so excited. Now here's what we're going to do. You want your bag, this is the top, and obviously right side is out. And we're going to put the little handles somewhere here. Here's what I did. I went in about two and a quarter inches. That's just where I liked it. You can do it whatever way you want. And that's where I'm going to be sewing the handles on. So I take this and I put the part that I actually, you know, sewed closed. So it has, uh, you know, where the, the seam actually is. The other side was just top stitched for no particular reason. I put that up and then I make a U shape. And then I just push the little fabric down. And I'm going to stick up above the bag about 
half an inch. I want to make sure it's really sewn in there. And I'm going to pin right where my pin was. Same here. I'm going to go up just a little bit and pin. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I don't need to measure. I can just go by what I'm seeing sticking out. So I'm going to put my stitched part up like this and like that. And then it's going to go right here. Oh, I need two more pins. So right there. And then a right here. And if it's not perfect, it's not a big deal. I took a break to do some other stuff and I am back. Okay, this is what we are about to do. We're going to take this and we're going to tuck it inside this. All right, this is right sides out. This is wrong side out. This is the wrong side. We're going to put it in. Make sure your little handles or if you have a long strap, make sure those are tucked in also. You're going to just... Um, Make the edges meet and hopefully the two pieces, you know, will fit okay. Now, there's some wiggle room with this for me because there's a lot of seams. So if there's a, you know, one piece that's a little bit bigger than the other, I can stretch. And you just want to look at your, your straps here. And make sure that they're lining up a little bit like that they're lining up and then you're just going to go I work on the inside and without stabbing myself I'm just gonna sew I'm gonna you know make sure that that's a little bit better lined up and you just sew all the way around you know all the way around you don't leave an opening or anything like that so let me go do that Okay, I went and sewed all the way around the top part, and now I'm just going to pull this through. So we have the, um, the outside and the inside. So what we're going to do before we tuck the inside in is, you can do it any way you want, but if you want it kind of reversible, what I do is I, you can just tuck both ends in and sew across. That's probably the neatest way. Or you can just put that together like this and then double fold. But I have so many seams, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to just, um, you know, put both sides in like I showed you. And then I'm just going to sew across and sew it closed. That was very easy. I didn't, you know, press it, pin it, anything. You just go to the machine and you just start it. And then it's very easy to just tuck the ends in. Now, I don't know if, um, you know, this looks shorter than this, so it might not be able to be reversible. Uh, I don't know. And also, I do want everybody to know that, you know, there's a lot of raw edges going on here. So there's going to be threads until there's none left to be trimmed. Uh, I like it that way. It looks just nice and raggy. Now we're just going to tuck all this inside. Oh my god. Look at this tote. I love it so much. Now we have a choice. You know, it could be left like this with the um, lining sticking out and stitched. Or we can just go ahead and force that down. I'm going to force it down. So I'm just going to push the lining in. And I'm going to top stitch with my red thread all the way around. I'm going to have a hard time putting this one on eBay. I love it so much. <laughs> but it's going on eBay. Go check out the link down below. Alright, you know, I didn't do a perfect job. Again, I'm dealing with all the little sticks. I love those sticks. But I think it came out pretty damned good. I really do. So, 
a lot of threads and I kind of like them. I'm not going to snip them off. Whoever gets this on eBay, there's some threads and uh, you can snip them if you want. All right, so this is what it looks like on the inside. Now, this is this way. And the bottom is probably about, I don't know, almost an inch shorter. I can feel it. So let's see what it looks like if we do turn it. And when I sewed around the top, I always sew on the inside. So I flipped it like this so I can go to my machine and then I just hold this fabric back and I sewed. Oh my God, I like it this way too. I do. I love this so much. And the little handles go with it and you can see the lining. So it's okay if the bottom is a little bit, um, I mean, it's okay if the outside is a little bit longer. It just makes it bunch up a little bit down in here. Hi, down here. But you can do it this way too if you want. Isn't that awesome? Made with scraps. And again, you don't have to um, have the little sticks. Although I do like them so much. Love. Um, you could do this all with just salvages. I think that would be so cool. We'll have to do one one time. Oh, I still have these 30 pieces. I was going to do a different video, but I want to finish this because I'm anxious to do other things. I kind of have a little pattern going and I can't really think of much of anything. I think I'm going to just go ahead and make a little pillow and I'm going to suggest that it goes in a dog or a cat's bed. I don't know. It can go on your couch, but I'm thinking after all the sewing is done, you know, it's going to be quite small. And I'm just going to stuff it with some polyester batting that I have here. I have uh, like three this way, one in the center, but here I have four. If I did three, three, three on each side, then I have two pieces left over. So some of these are a little bit skinnier than others, so I might be able to just make it work. I am going to make it work. So let me just uh, sew some of this together and I will show you. By the way, this is going to be a separate auction, and these auctions start at one penny. Free shipping for the USA, uh, outside USA has to pay shipping. And people say, uh, what do you mean, a penny auction? It just means that the bidding starts at a penny, and if you win it for a penny, you pay a penny, and you get it. Free shipping if you're in the USA. But uh, nothing ever really stays at a penny, but it's a penny auction because it started at a penny. That's all there is to it, and you can go check it out. I have some people get really good deals on some of the fabric scraps and stuff that I sell. Uh, not everything goes sky high, so take a chance if you want. You want to bid on something, but bidding isn't a game. If you bid and win, you are uh, expected to pay. Let's just put it that way. All right, let me start this. What I did to start is I put three together and then three together and I'm going to sew them together with one in the center. And I'm doing the exact same thing here. Three together, three together, and one in the center. Now I don't know if this is going to come out the same size. I'll just trim to whatever ends up being smallest. But I'm going to put four together here because I had two extras probably turn that so it's not touching the same. That in the center and then two on each side and then I'll do that. You can't really see but I have another identical thing like that happening here. So I'm going to do that to both of those. I'm so sad. I'm just off by a little bit on this one. I could have put maybe, you know, uh, a narrower and a wider and also here. These are pretty wide. But anyway, this guy came out good. And I just thought I would like something funky like that for one side. So I will be trimming here and putting these together and then I will trim around. So let me, but no, let me start with this one because this one's going to be smaller. Maybe I can do that to... Uh, Ooh, it almost fits, I don't know, a little bit better. I'm going to do it this way. All right, so I'm going to trim, sew these two together, and then I will trim and, uh, you know, cut off what I have to cut off up there. Okay, this was my smaller one. Again, a lot of, um, 
raw edges because all the sticks I you know I had a raw edge two raw edges of each stick they were folded and I didn't bother to zigzag over the raw edges because they were all different widths and I just didn't want to do that I just wanted to go down the center and let it be thready so now I'm going to put this one together and then I will trim it to match this guy everything is trimmed but I lost uh, one of these muslin sticks in the trimming and I'm going to actually save it and I'm going to put it back onto the pillow let me just finish picking here it came from here so I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to pick just a few stitches there so I can tuck it under and I'm just going to top stitch that back on I don't even know which one I just fixed, but that worked out great somewhere. I think it was here. So I'm all good. Um, I don't want to sew with the batting on first, I don't think. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put these two together, right sides facing. I think I'm going to do it this way for this. And I'm going to just leave a pretty wide opening because I'm going to cut some batting squares to put inside. So I'm just going to like start here, go around, and then stop here. Let me do that. I wanted to show you, this is all that I have left that I had to trim. And then this is um, a little bit of trimmings that I had when I was just, you know, evening out the individual blocks before sewing them together. So out of all those scraps, this is what I have. And... I don't know if I'm going to stick those in the pillow. I don't think so. Um, I think I'll just say that it's okay to not... I was going to say to toss them, but you know I'm not tossing them. <laughs> I could put them in a crumb quilt or something. Oh my god. Terrible. Gee, I don't know if I left that opening big enough to be able to... Yes, I think so. Alrighty. Going to just... It's going to be a very little pillow. Very tiny. But like I said, maybe, you know, I was going to suggest for a doll, but I don't know, kind of a funky pillow for a doll, don't you think? To me, a doll, if a doll has a pillow, the doll also needs a blanket. But a doggy can have a pillow in his bed or a kitty. I don't know, you can find something to do with it. Maybe, maybe not. That would have been a cute tote. It wouldn't have been lined, but that would have been a very cute tote. Gee, should have done that. All right, I'm going to cut a couple pieces of batting. It's not going to be attached inside. I'm okay with that. Going to make it smaller. Well, it would be nice if I did it this way, right? So I could see what I was doing. Very rough cutting here. This is two layers. And that's probably all that I'm going to put in there. This is a little bit funky cut. And uh, let me just shove that in there and let's see. Let's see what that does. Oh, I could probably have done three. Oh, that's nice. I'm going to do another piece or two. Can I just use this up? Can I? Can I? Let's see what I can do here with these scraps. I could do that there. Oh, I think I can do this. And then a piece here. Let's see. Let's go about that wide. See if I can shove that right there. And then maybe I can just shove... I don't know. Let's do it. Let's just shove those inside. So this way we know all the scraps are together where they belong. I like it very much. <sighs> okay, I'm going to actually just go sew this with the uh, batting not stuck inside the seam. It's very easy to just push it away. I just kind of pull this, tuck it in, the fabric in, and I'm just going to top stitch that shut. 
I can't tell you guys how happy I am with these two projects. This pillow, I think it's beautiful. I love it so much. I love the colors. I did try to trim a lot of the muslin. And again, you know, it'll just keep pulling out until it reaches the zigzag stitch and then it will be done. But uh, it came out really good. And I'm glad the scraps are in there because I would have saved those forever. So this way I'm free from them. <laughs> and the tote. Uh, I hope I'm making you guys fall in love with scraps. You know, go back to the beginning of this video and you'll see what I had for scraps. And I made two cool things with those scraps plus some polyester batting. And uh, I didn't use any other fabric other than what I had for those scraps. I'm having fun with this. I hope you guys like this. And I have other scraps that I've saved from other projects. And so I'm going to just continue doing these videos as long as I feel like doing them. Thank you so much for watching. Go look for the penny auctions for both these things. Link is down below. Bye.